Hi, my name is Brian Duggan and this is a demonstration of various different game AI techniques implemented in C Sharp for the Unity game engine. So first of all, most of these um, game AI techniques will, uh, will, will use steering behaviors and these little flying spaceships that you see in each one of the scenes, they're known as buoys. So the first behavior I'm demonstrating here is called the seek steering behavior. And how the steering behavior works is I'm able to give this buoy a destination point in the world which you can see highlighted with the little red crosshair. And the void will, the steering behavior will generate a force to move the void towards that point in the world. And as you can see, it will always try and reach the point at its maximum speed, so it, it, it ends up overshooting the void. Notice also that this, all the steering behaviors implement the banking technique. So that means that the, basically a small bit of the acceleration gets added into the um, void's up vector, and that causes the void to bank in a realistic way, the same way as an airplane would bank when it's turning. Also, you'll see that little grey crosshair in the scene, and that little grey crosshair um, is actually the offset target for a behaviour called offset pursue. And there's a kind of a ghost void added to every scene, which is offset pursuing some void in the scene, and that's so that I can attach the camera to the void, and you can basically get a void's eye view of the um, steering behaviour. So, steering behavior number two is very similar to this one. Uh, this steering behavior is called the arrive steering behavior. So, arrive is similar to the seek up to up to this what's called the stopping distance. This will work the same way as seek, but within the stopping distance, which is some radius from the destination point, the void's force is uh, ramped down to zero. So the void arrives at a full stop at its destination point. Again, we can do camera following to see what that steering behavior looks like from the void's perspective. One other behavior which is turned on for both seek and arrive demos here is a behavior called, I'm just going to press function F7 to level out my camera, yeah, is a behavior called um, plane avoidance. And with a plane avoidance steering behavior, you can tell the, uh, the void to go to some point in the world. It would project forward five points in front of itself. And if any one of those five points are on the wrong side of the world plane, then a force is generated which will push the entity away from the world plane. And those five points are referred to as, in the literature as feelers. So one other thing you can do with any of these demos as well is you can turn on the drawing of all of the objects vectors. So you can turn on the forward vector drawing, the up vector drawing, and the right vector drawing. So I'll turn that off so that's F5 on all these demos. Demo number three is called Pursue. Actually, we really need to turn on drawing of the debug lines for this one. So with Pursue, the larger of the two voids is implementing a random walk. So it's just going to seek to a point in the world. And once it reaches that point, the, it, will, it will find a new point to seek to. The smaller of the two voids is using dead reckoning to try and predict the future position of the larger void. And you can see that now because it's quite far away, the destination point is also quite far away. It's basically parameterized based on the speed of the lower void, the smaller void, the speed of the larger void, and also the uh, distance from the small void to the large void. And then it will calculate a projection, project forward a point in front of the large void, and it will try and um, basically seek that point. Again, we can turn on camera following for this as well, so you can get a sort of a camera view or a void's view of this behavior. So that's behavior number three. Yes, yeah, behavior number, next behavior is just a path following behavior. With this particular behavior, you can again notice the banking. All the void is doing now is it's following the path, going from one waypoint to the next, and you can see that those waypoints are highlighted by the red crosshair. So again, this one looks really cool from the camera's perspective, from the void's perspective, or from the perspective of the void, which is attached to the, the void um, that's implementing this one is implementing the follow behavior, the other is implementing the offset to pursue steering behavior. So the next demo I'm going to show, I'm going to turn that one off, turn that off. The next demo I'm going to show, this is a really cool demo because this actually implements, just the camera level up again, and I'll camera following. This particular demo, the leader at the front is implementing a seek steering behavior, so it's just going to seek to a point in the world. And all of these smaller voids are implementing an offset pursue, so they're going to try and pursue a point relative to the leader, an offset relative to the leader. 
All the voids in this scene also have dynamic optical avoidance turned on. And with dynamic optical avoidance, they'll project forward a box in front of each one of the voids. And if those boxes, boxes intercept with any of the spherical ob uh, objects, then uh, a lateral force is calculated, which is going to try and steer the voids around the um, large objects. Uh, the obstacles and also a braking force is calculated. Actually, I'll run that one again. And this time, what I'll do is I'll turn on the debugging of the objects and vectors, or I'll turn on the, the drawing of the objects and vectors. So I think this looks kind of cool with the objects and vectors drawn in. Again, you can do the camera perspective on that one. And again, one kind of cool thing here, I can turn that one off, but I can turn on the debug line drawing. And this time, you can see those lines getting drawn, those little blue lines getting drawn every time the optical avoidance steering behavior kicks in. So F6 turns that one off. Next demo I have is a flocking demo. So I'll turn camera following off for the flocking demo so we can see what's going on. And let's drop over to the other side so we can see where the scene is lit a little bit nicer. So flocking demo is really cool. What happens in this particular demo is these boys are implementing separation, which tries to push them a little bit apart from their neighbors. Cohesion, which tries to keep them close to their neighbours, and alignment, which tries to keep them going in the same direction as their neighbours. And what I'm going to do for this one is I'll just slow down the demo a small bit. See, this actually just happens just by multiplying the time delta by, um, or sorry, subtracting a number from the time delta. So basically, or adding or subtracting a number from the time delta. So that just causes the scene to either slow down or speed up. So you can slow the scene right down with separation, cohesion, and alignment. These guys are also implementing the dynamic obstacle avoidance they're also implementing uh, evade of the bigger void and then they're also implementing the uh, a steering behavior called wander which just adds a little bit of randomness to their behavior to their to their movement um, yes sphere constraint the sphere constraint just keeps the voids from flying off the screen by trying to generate a force if they go outside if you like the world sphere so this behavior uh, when you combine some of these behaviors together, you get this beautiful emergent behavior called flocking. And it's very reminiscent of shoals of fish, flocks of birds, and various different natural phenomena. It's kind of cool because you can get a boy's own perspective of this. And this one looks really cool as well if you turn on the drawing of the the base of the vectors for each of these guys and they're real kind of organic quality as you watch them from flying around. And you can even turn that one, let me just try and find a better shot of this one. I think it has a real organic quality. It looks like some sort of giant spider or something. And then you can turn off those ones and turn on these ones so you can see their debug. Uh, drawing lines getting drawn and again you can see them basically flocking um, steering around those um, obstacles dynamically so this is an o n squared algorithm and my implementation of it currently will support around 200 voids in unity and any more than 200 voids on this the scene just slows down the frame rate drops significantly so if i press function f6 and turn that guy off and let's have a look at the next demo so the next demo is a state machine demo and in this demo, I'm going to press a function of 7 here to level out my camera. There are two voids, one of whom is implementing a path following behavior, the other void is implementing a seek behavior. And if the... Yeah, okay, when, when the distance gets too small between them, the void that was doing the path following behavior switches to an attacking state. And you can press function F4 to bring up the hood and you can see what state it's in. So you can see it's currently in the idle state. I'm going to press function F6 and turn on the debug lines. I'll try and give it a point so we get it to cause it to switch state again. Yeah, I need to bring it over here. Again, you can see the path following behavior. Oh, there we go. It switched to the hacking state again. It's going to fire at that guy. And there's a slight differential in the maximum speed that could be applied to both of these guys. Function F1 gives me the camera view. So if I send that guy off, what will eventually happen is the distance will become. Uh, greater than the voids, um, greater than the range for the attacking behavior and the behavior will switch back to the idle state. So this is an example of uh, basically finite state machine AI done using the finite state machine design pattern. So the last demo I have, seven, this is a pathfinding demo. 
So this particular demo makes use of an algorithm called the A star algorithm. I'll press F6 to turn that to both the line drawing off. So A star, how this one works is we start with some point in the world and you give the algorithm the destination point in the world and the algorithm will cost, calculate the lowest cost path from the start to the destination in the scene. And then just to um, I'll just have a path following behavior enabled for that little void. You can change this around a little bit. Just bring F4 so you can see the hood. What you can do is you can press uh, the O key. The O key actually gets the um, A star implementation that I have to generate um, nodes on the Y uh, axis and not just on the X and the Z axis. So that means it's kind of a 3D path as opposed to just a 2D on a 2D plane. So the path can basically have points which go up above the obstacles as well as points that just go um, to the sides of the obstacles. And again, you can press F1 to get a camera's eye view or a void's eye view of the scene. The last thing that I'm going to demo is what's called the path smoothing algorithm. So the path smoothing algorithm basically removes unnecessary waypoints from the path. So you can see the path smoothing algorithm there. So I'll let this guy go back and I'll turn on camera following for this. You can also see the time that the A star algorithm takes to execute on some estimation as to how complex the A star is there, but just the, the maximum size of the open list getting printed out there. And we can follow this void basically as it moves from waypoint to waypoint on its calculated path in this 3D scene. Alright, so all my code is available on my GitHub repository under a let me press that one, get this one again. Number three, fucking number five. Yeah, all my code is available on my GitHub. Well, you can see the link at the start and end of this demo. And um, the code is available under an MIT license. There are some PowerPoint slides up there explaining how each of these behaviors work. And all the code is free for anybody that wants to make use of it in a project under an MIT license on my GitHub account. So thank you for listening.